here it looks like we can actually see its food moving through its esophagus. G'day, I'm Karen Marie. Welcome to Life in the Bush. Do you know what I love about coming out to the bushland between showers on a wet winter's day in Perth? It's the opportunity to potentially find native snails. In this video, I will share loads of cool information about these cute little critters that most people rarely get to see in the bush. Now, around the suburbs of Perth in southwest Western Australia, there are two local land snail species that are more common than others. However, the two snails that most people will see around Perth are not native. They are the brown garden snail, Helix aspera, like this one, and the Mediterranean or white snail, Theba persana, that look like these ones here. The two local snails both belong to the same ancient genus Bothriembryon. They are Bothriembryon bulla and Bothriembryon kendricki. And they've survived along with other Bothriembryon species around southwest Western Australia since Gondwana time, which is a mere 550 million years. So it's already rained here this morning and I may or may not find some snails in this patch of bushland. I haven't been searching for snails in this bushland before, but about nine years ago, I came across both species in the one small suburban pocket of bushland. So a few weeks ago, I returned to that site to take some video footage for you. On the day, I forgot a vital piece of equipment that didn't enable me to plug my microphone into my iPhone and it was a very windy day so here's a look at some of the footage that I took <laughs> and when I looked back at it it cracked me up because you couldn't hear a word I was saying hence why I'm in the bush today to re-record the audio for you <laughs> now when I returned to this site at first I found a piece of broken shell as you can see here. So I was feeling hopeful. Then I found a more complete shell and was still feeling hopeful but beginning to think maybe all I was going to find was shells. Then I saw a complete shell and it was, but it also had a body hiding underneath. So as you can imagine, I was super excited and I was very fortunate that it actually only took a minute or two of careful searching to find this fascinating little creature. Now I only found one species that day and this here is Bothriembryon bulla. But fortunately, one of my friends came across a Bothriembryon kendricki last year and I captured plenty of footage of that one, which we'll get to later. Bothriembryon bulla has a light coloured body and shell and is slightly larger than Bothriembryon kendricki, which has a darker coloured body and shell. The snails forage in the leaf litter and under low vegetation. They tend to feed more on detritus than on living leaves. Detritus is the dead organic matter in the bush, like the leaves and sticks among the leaf litter. In this way, they are assisting with the decomposition of plant matter and cycling nutrients back into the soil. They probably eat mostly fungi and bacteria whose role is also to break down the dead organic matter on the bushland floor. Here it looks like we can actually see its food moving through its esophagus. The whole time I was filming this little snail, it's important to note that it only covered an area not much bigger than the size of my hand. So I guess the snail's world is a lot smaller than ours and these little remaining pockets of bushland are so important because they are their home. And that's a good reminder for all of us to tread carefully when we're visiting the bush, stick to the paths as much as you can because you never know what little creature might be living under your next step. Now this cute little snail is Bothriembryon kendricki the one my friend came across in bushland last year. And me being me, I took as much footage of it as I could, so I'm pleased I can share this with you. So although it's hard to tell by comparison, the Bothriembryon kendricki is usually slightly smaller than Bothriembryon bulla. You can also see that its body is a dark gray color and the shell is a lot darker and very attractive with different shades of brown and cream. Check out the incredible pattern 
on its body. Like all land snails, both Bothriembryon bulla and Kendricki need to stay moist so as to avoid dehydration during the warmer months of the year. So they burrow into the earth and seal their shell with what is called an epiphram. It acts like a bit of a door at the um, opening of their shell. And in winter, when the rains come, they emerge again. And this is why it's a good time of year to look for them. This is when they will come out and feed and mate and lay eggs. Notice that it has two sets of tentacles at the front of the body. The lower set of tentacles in land snails are for feeling and smelling and the upper set of tentacles are for vision. These little ones are also a source of food themselves for a variety of animals including birds and bobtail lizards. Did you know that there's this great app you can get called iNaturalist that will help you to identify little bushland critters? It allows you to post photos of any little critters you come across in the bushland and other people who use the app will view those photos and hopefully identify the animal for you. And when my friend found the Spothriembryon kendricki, I posted photos and its identification was confirmed. If you're keen to see native snails in their natural environment and you live in Perth or are thinking of travelling to Perth, the two species that I've shown you in this video today, as well as a third Bothriembryon species, do also occur in Kings Park, which is an iconic and beautiful large patch of bushland in Perth city worth a visit. And hey, if you come across native snails in your travels, I would love to see photos of them or hear about them. So comment down below. I'm not sure if you can attach photos below. So if not, if you want to email them to me, my email address is on my about page. Perhaps you might find some other interesting creature in the bushland and have it identified on the iNaturalist app or another similar app. If you do, let me know. I'd be really curious to find out about it. Now before I wrap up this video, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where I've been filming. They are the Noongar Wajuk people. And I would love to know what the Noongar Wajuk people called these snails. I haven't been able to find any information written about it. If you know something, please write a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Well, I'm stoked. I feel very fortunate that I have come across these native snails and been able to share them with you. I've worked in conservation in bushland reserves around Perth for around 10 years and been in over 100 reserves. And these are the only sightings I've ever had of native snails. I didn't find any here today, so I didn't get any extra footage to share with you. Thank you for your valuable time. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. For those of you who are anything like me and could watch these mini mollusks all day, I've tacked on some extra footage at the end of this for you to sit back and chill. I hope you have a joyful remainder of your day and I look forward to seeing you soon on Life in the Bush. Thank you.